Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good day to you. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is the Rio Chiboda Show. Now, from wherever you are around the world, I hope you're having a fantastic day and whatever time it is um, around the world when you are tuned into this particular episode. Thank you once again for all the love and support and for keeping coming back to this episode and to this show. Rather, I love having these conversations and these discussions with you Monday to Friday, of course, right Right here from live from New York City. This is the Rio Jamoda show, and I am your favorite global darling, Rio Jamoda. And um, I'm super, super excited once again to be serving you your daily dose of global goodness, which is what we do here on the show. On the show. Um, giving you glo good global people, good global places and, and destinations, good global ideas and innovations, good global um, uh, brands and products, of course. So we're going to be unpacking all of that and so much more on the show. And today, I don't have a good global person, but I do have a good global idea and innovation. Now, I'm not, all, I'm not, I'm no expert in this particular topic, but I do think it's one that's so important for us to unpack and for us to have a conversation about and I'm um, hoping that you're going to, of course, learn a thing or two as I've learned a thing or two in kind of learning about this process and understanding this innovation and this idea. So please do sit back, relax, and let's enjoy the next couple of minutes together, you and I. Don't forget to hit us up on social media. We're at the underscore Rio Jamoda Show on Instagram. Find us on Twitter, on, 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 in, on Twitter, on, on X. Um, Twitter X, find us on um, YouTube, find us on uh, TikTok and Facebook, all of the social media handle platforms, we are there. Just find that, look for us and you'll find us, right? And of course, like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to, of course, um, listen to more of these episodes on our Spotify, which is where you can find um, and get to listen to the episode with some of, with, you know, some of the guests that we've had most recently. But let's get into today's conversation. And I did say good global ideas and innovation. We are living in such a a time in the history of humanity where there's just a sur there's just a surplus or an an ex exuberant amount of ideas and innovations and more than ever are we seeing people kind of take forth um ideas and materialize them and kind of make them into fruition and now people are so innovative that a lot of the so of the problems that we find in the world uh someone is thinking about a solution somewhere around the world <laughs> and that's that in itself is exciting to know and interesting to kind of unpack um and you know there's i believe that there's there's a beauty in that there's a beauty in people now being um kind of using their capacity of creating and 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 bringing things to life more than ever um bringing ideas to life more than ever and i think what the pandemic really was able to do was it was able to kind of recenter all of us and um allow us to be able to nitpick within those places of imaginations that are be way beyond our wildest thoughts and it gave us time to reflect on how we can make those innovations come to life and how these big broad ideas that we might have had have had the time to kind of recoup and and, and figure out how are we going to unpack and unlayer those in the time to come and we did see a number of different innovations come into life this past um you know in the past three four years and um having to kind of be around i mean the, the most that i've engaged with technology and and um science right my my dad is a computer science he did computer science and he's a web you know work, works in it and web development and um coding and computer all of that right so my the my close proximity towards technology was in that capacity and i happen to have built um you know a platform that is a streaming platform that has you know, a little bit of technology engraved in it, and even at least to 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 the capacity of thinking about what what tools could we use um, that are technology based that could make this platform kind of you know flow it fl come into fruition. Um, but there was something really particularly interesting 
And this phenomenon that we are coming across now that has been making waves around the world from wherever you are, you hear of the word AI um, and, you know, standing for artificial intelligence. And it's been one that has made people so, so stressed out. And there's a bit of a panic mode and a panic button that has been kind of pressed and switched on when people started hearing about this term. And it, it, it um, promises you know and it, it's seemingly like it's going to be eroding a lot of different jobs and a lot of different sectors and a lot of human replacement from you know machinery and technology and systems and um, and software etc so that has been a real scare for many people around the world and now the question then began you know that I've been asking myself and even people have been engaging within you know who are in this in, in the sector is what then could you know what could we do as humans what alternatives do we have now that we are aware that this is here and um it's going to it's going to be here for a minute so <laughs> we need to start putting on our adapt adaptive mode right we we have the ability to be a very adaptive as human beings we it's an innate quality that we have where we are able to think we are able to come up with ways and figure out um you know new ways of doing things but we also have the capacity of adapting to new norms right so it's now we are i think we are now in a time in society where we are trying to figure out what is this new norm what is what does a, a new society look like where you know what has been for the not for the past say decade even say century that right, where humans were at the epicenter of making decisions humans were the epi were the, were they were they at were the epicenter of of kind of controlling how things occur and how things come about in the world but when we start thinking about and start con you know conversing about artificial intelligence where um, the overall concept of it and the overall idea of it at least to what's been communicated with the public is that it is something that can replace human capacity to a, a very large degree so what do we do about that what do we how do we go about even figuring that out right and i'll share a personal story of how i first heard of this particular terminology called ai um and it was at the end of 2019 right so unaware of what was to come in the following year but i remember new years of 2019 i was at home with my mom and my family and we were kind of celebrating new years but we happened to be watching a sermon by um dr cindy trim who's an incredible um you know leader in a thing around the world she's you know an, an enthusiastic leader who is really kind of engraving the importance of um human beings just being in, in, in absolute awe of their capacity and helping people really, you know, channel that capacity in order to, to be of use and to be of purpose to the world, right? And you can go check her out and see some of the work that she's done. She's absolutely incredible. So I happened to watch this particular sermon um, at New Year's of 20, 2019, right? 2019. And it was, I think, about a, a one hour, 30 minute, one hour, 59 minutes, something along those lines. But it was a, quite of an extensive, um, it was one of those types of teachings where if you if you just are not in the mood to learn, you're just not going to check out. But if you are intrigued by what she's kind of saying, and she was kind of really prophesying about what was yet to come. But from a research point of view, from an understanding of, I, I believe she was sharing that um, after having taken some time to uh, understand from a, a leadership point of view where the world was going. And she spoke about this thing that was coming, right? AI and how we needed to position ourselves for this new norm and this thing called AI. And at that time, it was like, oh, I mean, yay. <laughs> you know, but I was intriguingly listening to the sermon and I was listening to learn, um, of course, because it's a new year, right? So I, I, I love kind of, I love being in, in positioning as the new year begins, especially at the end of the year, beginning of the year. Um, oftentimes I would not be engaged in that much festivities and being, you know, at events, et cetera. Um, Cause I think it's such a sacred time to be able to transition. And so that's just my own philosophy. But when I was listening to that, I, I, I just wanted, I just wanted, and I was intrigued to just sit down and just listen. 
Um, and she and I and I definitely I'm trying to try and kind of link the the sermon the sermon to this particular video so you can check it out. But um, it spoke about AI, it spoke about the future, and what we were yet to anticipate. And it is 2019. You know, we've heard of COVID in China. We've heard they were building hospitals, but the concept of the world shutting down just did not make any sense at that point because it was like, oh, there's this crisis in China, right? But then when the pandemic hit and I was then reflecting of that particular message in the middle of, say, um, April, May of, um, you know, 2020, when we were in the cracks of the pandemic, right? And it was kind of, all hands, you know, everything has been shut. And then I was reflecting on, and I, I remember sending it to a couple of people who I thought might be, might want to learn about it, right? I was like, let me send it to a couple of people. And some were like, oh, what is this? Well, you're like, <laughs> you know, uh, as a deep person that I am, um, that's the kind of thing that I like to do. Like if I really um, find something super helpful and useful. I'd, I'll share it to a couple of people. So I shared this video to a couple of people and I was like, hey, listen to this. This was shared in 20, end of 2019 and look at where we are right now. Let's start putting our boots on to be in position for this new technological wave that's coming, right? Technology is coming and it's hitting us fast. So um, that's when I started kind of sitting down and kind of putting together this idea of working on my platform and working on my, you know, on the VN streaming platform and kind of the VN, the VN brand in itself and kind of structuring it in a capacity where it's going to be technologically based, it's going to be online, it's going to be utilizing and, and using the digitization element of media and seeing how that goes. So that was at the core what it was stemmed from that particular messaging and due to my limitation and limited capacity of what I do know about technology, um, I kind of wanted to then spend time with people who did and understand and learn. And, and I've been engaging in a lot of different, um, you know, readings and videos about AI, but really under trying to understand what it is and what it's about. But what for me has been intriguing has just been seeing the scare and the anxiety that people have had surrounding AI because of the capacity and what it can potentially do and what that potentially then means for us as people. So in this particular episode, um, from then, 2019, watching Dr. Cindy Trim's message to now, I'm now um, quite clear and um, it's it's very it's very clear that AI is here. <laughs> it's not something that we're still speaking about that's coming. It's something that's here that we need to think about um, from a solutions point of view to say what do we do now? How do how do we what do we do as humans? How do we you know um, position ourselves effectively to be to be in placement of this new wave of technology? I am looking to have an expert in the subject to come and join me in studio, virtually or, in, or, or here, I'm in New York City, to unpack this topic, right? And I'm no, I'm gonna say it again, I'm no expert. I'm gonna be utilizing a couple of resources today for us to unpack AI and it being a good innovation, good global innovation and idea. It's global. It's, it's, it's all over the world, so it's not isolated to western parts of the world or southern parts of the world or eastern or western. It is all around the world and it's here to stay. So how do we, um, you know, best position ourselves? Now, if you're wondering what is AI and then, you know, um, really trying to understand what do I mean when I speak of AI, is it something that, um, you know, it's, it's just artificial intelligence but what does that even mean right and i'm a, you know we have a very trusted friend his name is google <laughs> who happens to explain things to us when we don't know what they are right and he happens to know all these answers and um so we're gonna ask him what it is right and he's gonna try and give us the most diplomatic answer or the most kind of um the most answer that is as as vast and as and as open as possible, and as I said, hoping to have an an an, ex, an expert in studio soon to come and unpack this topic. But AI is a field of study, also known as artificial intelligence. Um, it is intelligence intelligence of machines or or software, 
as opposed to intelligence of humans and animals. That part over there is like as opposed, kind of like negating humans and animals. <laughs> it's just like, it's, it, yeah, I, I could get the fear element behind it, right? Um, it is a field of study in computer science, which develops and studies intelligent machines, such as machines that may be called um, AIs. Um, and in simple terms, it is the science of making machines that can think like humans. It can do things that are considered smart. And AI technology can process large amounts of data in ways unlike humans. The goal for AI is to be able to do things such as reorganize patterns, um, or rather recognize patterns, make decisions, and judge like humans. <laughs> Quite scary, right? I think the part that freaks me out the most is it can do things that it can start to think like humans the idea that we can create something that can cre that can have the human mentality and human capacity to think is beyond my capacity of reasoning <laughs> it's like how is that even possible um it's considered smart and the technology can process large amounts of data unlike humans can so we as humans um and i believe you know people have said that we can train our minds that our minds are a muscle that is trainable that is um uh, expandable but as humans we don't necessarily utilize our minds as far and as wide and as deep and as expansive as it can get due to limitations due to conditioning and many other reasons that we're not gonna be you know discussing today but there is so much that as humans that we can do that we have the capacity for that we have not even accessed so i believe that the aim and the goal of ai is to enable that far beyond capacity like it's it's it enables it, it is able to access that uh which humans cannot or which humans are unlikely to um and you know i i, I get it right i i get it it's freaky it's it's scary and when explained what the main purpose of it and the goal for it is to provide software that can reason um on input and explain an output and it will provide once again human like interactions with software and offer decisions decision support to sp for, for specific tasks but it's not a replacement for humans and it won't be anytime soon that's a bit of a relief and that gives us a little bit of ease when thinking about how far this particular software technology can go right um and something to kind of also think about is that it, I think that it can also open up avenues for other things that we can explore as humans as well. I don't think there's going to be anything that I think the part decision making is a bit of a uh, it freaks me out a little bit because I think we make decisions based on not just things in front of us or based on just data. You know, as humans, we also have other elements of ourselves, which um you know that only humans possess right so it's interesting to know that that's one of the elements and one of the derivative or rather one of the one of the factors that ai considers and that's decision making which um you know we'll see how that how that goes um because i think yeah making decisions is quite a an 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 it drew i think it's a humanly thing and it's it's innate to human beings so um, but when it does say that it cannot replace humans, I think that's a fact. That's and that's that's the fact, right? Nothing can replace humans. I don't think any type of machinery can replace humans in the sense that without humans, that machine wouldn't even be. Do you know what I mean? Like the machines just didn't pop up from nowhere. It's just like machine. No, humans were the ones who even went, who even had the capacity to even create the machines. Therefore, humans are at once again the epicenter of ideas and innovations no matter how much that particular machine can do i think that at the end of the day it 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 in itself was still created or even envisioned by a human being so we cannot ever replace humans and i think once we start thinking from that sense and start framing our mindsets as humans from that capacity that nothing will replace us. It's a matter of us finding ways to innovate ourselves and start, you know, um, 
expanding our capacity a little bit more that we'll be able to see the see the value of AI and see how it can actually be of benefit to us than it will be of detriment. And you know, I've 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 also found myself and I remember when you know, I was not part of the fortunate group of of, of college students who <laughs> who had um, what is it, Chat GPT. I, I remember there was a time when there was a debate regarding. I think it is still a debate now about kind of students using Chat GPT to write their assignments, to do work and schoolwork, and you know, essays for them, etc. And that kind of being a phenomenon now that the educational system needs to figure out and work upon, but just I kind of missed that train I, I missed the chat GPT train so <laughs> I, was, um, I never used that in college I still you know I was still part of the group of people who still needed to think through how to jot down 3,000 words in a matter of a couple of days and make that make sense right <laughs> I was part of that group of students um, but I think now the, the the students that are kind of in school now have all this resource in front of them and it's kind of figuring out how to best utilize this resource but also in a way that still expects the human to still kind of put in effort and put in work i don't know where how far that the human that, that, that the education system is with regards to that um but i know it's something that's kind of there right but i get to use ai i use ai on the regular <laughs> I think AI just makes things a little bit easier. It just, it just makes things a little bit easier, right? So I have, you know, I host this podcast every day, right? So you can imagine the amount of work that is, right? It's from research to the production element of it, to the post-production element of it, to the promotion and the marketing and the putting it out there, the design element of it. There are so many factors that come into putting this particular production together, and I am grateful for AI because I do this program all on my own, right? It's a one-man show. And the resources that AI has provided or the platforms that have incorporated AI and that are user utilizing AI just make it a little bit better for me, right? Now, I don't have to stress that much about you know, creating and providing new episodes every day. But also, I don't have to stress about having people um, and also spending too much time on the production of the episodes, right? I don't have to spend hours per in post-production editing. I don't have to spend hours designing. I don't have to spend hours, you know, um, working on, a, on an idea and kind of putting that into fruition. So it just makes life a little bit easier i'm just gonna say so for this show i think there are three main kind of platforms that i use that have now integrated and i think i i love programs and i love platforms and i love um you know places and that are just utilizing this particular and integrating ai into their systems and in their platforms because it just it just makes the process a lot more smoother so that i mainly on the regular use three platforms that have AI integration um, to make this podcast happen. And I am telling you, this is a good, good global um, idea and innovation. Just give me one second and I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> That part, I still need AI to do. So it's so funny because I use these lights in the studio and they are censored, right? So to some degree, they, they, they use AI. Because <laughs> if they don't see, if they don't feel movement or they don't, they don't see, if there's no movement in the room, they're going to they're gonna switch off. So I need to kind of have them, if they were manual, that would have been different because then it's switched on and it stays on. But if it's not, it's censored. And that's like what AI is, you know, it's like it's these lights are now intelligent enough to think that there's no one in the room, let's switch it off, or there's no movement in the room, let's switch them off, right? A practical example of AI that is able to think, it thinks for, <laughs> it's just, it's like, don't have to worry about switching the lights off, because I'm going to think that if there's no one in the room, then we're going to switch the lights off. But anyway, that's just a practical example of AI that just happened right now. <laughs> But I was saying that there are three, plat three platforms that I use to make this podcast happen that have AI integration and that make my life, my kind of planning. I finish, pro you know, 
shooting and filming and editing in a very short amount of time, in a couple of hours actually. And, um, and an episode is up, you know, and it's already airing. So the first platform that I use that has AI integration is called Riverside. And I've tried a couple of, of, of softwares that do, um, you know, podcast recordings, etc. And I've kind of tested the waters in a couple. And I think I really enjoy and I like Riverside um, because of just some of the AI integrations that it has. You know, it allows you... it. <laughs> The editing process is seamless. I don't have to edit a thing, nothing with Riverside. And I love that. It does the editing and it does the exporting for you. If I have a guest who's joining me virtually, I'm able to, it, it edits that particular episode together for me and it captures the, the, the recording from the guest, from me, puts it together, creates one episode, and I don't have to do that in post. It also enables, it also uses AI to generate some promotional videos that would be then I would use for post-production. And I'm also able to kind of, um, you know, fix a thing or two in those magic um, clips or rather it's, it's what it's called magic clips. And it's, it's the AI generated clips that then would, you know, it would cut them in real formatting. So I don't have to re resize the video. And, you know, it has all of that in place to resize the videos according to what are you trying to use it for. So it just makes the process a lot smoother. So I would record an episode for like an hour. And then I would spend about maybe an hour or two trying to get the footage, export the footage in the best quality possible and get those magic clips and then have the episode done and put together. So that's the first platform that I use. It's called Riverside FM. I adore it, right? And I, this is not a paid promotion, but I just really love it. The second platform that I use that, that uses AI integration is called Canva and all of the designs that are utilized for the, for the show um, and all the branding for the show is from Canva. So from the logo to the color scheme creation to the um, branding, you know, software and all of that that's, that's used, um, the colors, the, you know, the YouTube thumbnails, the social media posts, all of that is created on Canva. I created on Canva and, um, and Canva kind of has all these AI integrations in it as well, where I don't have to kind of really stress about, um, you know, if I put my logo on a photograph and I'm trying to find, um, and I'm trying to use or rather create a poster and I've put the logo of the show on the poster, it automatically finds those colors of the logo. And when I'm trying to find the color of the logo, it will pop it up for me automatically so that I can use it throughout the rest of the post. I don't know if that makes sense, but if you'll, if you'll go on our social media platforms and if you'll go on um, our YouTube, et cetera, you'll find there's a consistent color that is across the board on all social media platforms you know, branding, et cetera, et cetera, logo, all of that's been created on Canva and Canva understands, like we have the brand, the, the branding of the show and the branding of the show then um, is kind of used across the board and, and, and it can just be multiplied several, se several times. So I love it. And I mean, Canva is now in the process of developing more AI integrations. It's, it's, it's just a lot of beautiful things that you can do on that platform. I love it. Like I'm a Canva, I, I go on Canva, I think every single day. I think I'm like, I'm obsessed with that, with that platform. And um, so, and it has great AI integrations. The third one that I do use as well is called Wix, which is a website and a web, um, it's a customization platform. And um, the, the website for the show I've created on Wix, Utilizing, of course, all the AI integrations, um, creating things like dynamic pages, creating, you know, um, the different menu options, all of those things. I mean, Wix now is kind of adding every single time I'm, I'm, I'm logging on to Wix, there's a new in AI integration somewhere, somehow, right? And it's, which is also what we use, pardon me, what we use for this platform as well, um, for the website of the show. So those are the three platforms that I use on a regular that are already utilizing AI and, um, you know, and now, I mean, even for this particular show, I don't necessarily need additional three, four people to do all these different tasks because it's doing it for me. Right. So now then the question is what happens, you know, 
if people were to do those roles now, you know, what do those people now do? You know, so it's kind of it's a it's a big debate that I think is it's really one that um, it is to the benefit. Like these AI integrations are benefiting me so much that I don't have to worry about things I would be worrying about or have spent time on things I would be spending time on that I didn't necessarily have to spend time on because AI is doing that for me now, you know. I'm looking forward to seeing a lot more AI integrations from, I think even algorithms are, I'm stand, I stand to be corrected on that, but it's a form of AI that's able to generate and understand. And I think, you know, algorithms kind of have been on social media for a little bit. So, but I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how social media platforms and all these kind of regularly used platforms are integrating AI as well as we move along in the future um, because I think they is, I haven't seen or haven't maybe explored enough to know all of the AI um, integrations that we'll find on your Instagrams and your you know on your Twitter or your X or, or all these other platforms that we use on a regular um, so yes so that's what I use for the show and um, check it out if you haven't been using those make sure to check it out it just makes life so much easier now there are companies that I have come across that we are being you know empowered to check out to know that are you know top AI companies now companies like IBM Google Amazon people.ai AlphaSense um, Data Robot, H2O AI, Open AI, and Clarify. Now, these are platforms that, according to builtin.com, are top AI companies that you should be in the lookout for and you should start checking out. I will be leaving the link to this particular, um, to the builtin.com website so you can check out what companies are currently on the rise within the AI space that you should definitely check out. There's a total of 63 artificial intelligence companies that you should know about according to this website. So go check those out on the description below. The question now becomes, are we, should we be integrating it? Should we be excited about it? Should we be afraid of AI? That's dependent on you. I think it's one, you know, you can answer that question for yourself, depending on where you are, depending on, you know, what industry you're in because there are industries that are going to and that are currently being disrupted by AI and now we are trying and really uh, it's, uh, it's upon our own it's, uh, it's upon our, our owners to then say what am I doing to best position <laughs> myself um, excuse me for that to best position myself to be part of this new technological wave I say why not embrace it? Why not find ways to work ourselves and work our way around it and learn as much as possible as we can about it, right? And try and learn as much as we can, watch videos about it, Google things about it, uh, engage with people who are currently leading within the space. And there's very few people who uh, have full knowledge and capacity of what it is right now as it's it's a new thing. It's, a, it's an innovation. It's an, you know, it's, uh, it's new. So, very few people and a lot of people are trying to understand now. So we are all in this process of learning about it and knowing more about it and figuring it out, right? So go check it out. Go find more platforms that are utilizing an integrated AI. Let me know in the comment section below which platform are you using that's integrating AI and what are your thoughts on AI? Are you afraid? Are you excited? Are you a little bit in the know, in the lukewarm section i'd love to know from you so hit us up on social media also across all social media platforms and let us know what are some of your thoughts that's all i have in store for you today ladies and gents and that was our good global idea and innovation thank you so much for tuning in i am your darling your favorite global darling for your jamoda from me to you with so much love it's goodbye and have a fantastic day i'll see you tomorrow to serve you yet Again, your daily dose of global goodness. Cheers for now. Mwah. Goodbye. <laughs>